Okay, this is Sir Daf Kuf Yudalid, Ahmed Aleph on the bottom right hand side. The Alter Rebbe says that the level called Halosman, that is the motion made from the feminine, the recipient characteristic, to arouse that there should be a revelation from the Soviet into the Mamale, whether it's in Atzidus, whether it's in Biyat, it is all linked to the Jewish people. We are the ones who can elevate ourselves to be closer to Hashem, as is explained before. And on the contrary, as is further underscored. Now, there's two different ways in which we can elevate the Mayan Nukvin. One is to the level of Mamale called Alman, which is the level that we call Tikkun. And the second is to the level that's called Toyu, Similar, which is the level of Seder. Now, this uh, approach, which we make to the level of Mun, to the level of Tikkun, is different than the elevation of Mun, of our instigation, we being the ones to get it started, when we reach up to the level of Toyu. Now, the level of Tikkun is an abundance of kalim, very organized, that the lights should literally fill each one of them according to their capacity. They are commensurate, the lights are commensurate with the receiving kalim. And here we have all different levels, levels upon levels from vessels upon vessels. Now, the mun level, that is when we elevate Mayan Nukfin, the feminine quality, to this level of tikkun, again, we have many kalim. And this comes from the level of the birurim that we try to find the godliness in the 288 spark of Tayu that fell during the Shvira Sakalim into the world of Bria. Now, the elevation of the Nitsutsis from Bia is to elevate it to the highest level. So it should be properly receptive for the presence of the revelation of the infinite light of Hashem. Now, the idea of Torah and mitzvahs that are invested within physical things, that is the noiga, the light that has fallen down to this world through the smashing of the vessels, when they are transformed into a keli for the revelation of godliness as they are in tefillin, for example, when we transform animal skin into tefillin, or we transform wheat into truma and maestras in such matters, in all mitzvahs, which engage the mineral, the vegetable, and the animal. We access the divine light, the noiga that's within it. And this is the process of elevating the feminine quality to the characteristic of the tikkun, at that it should be known through the 248 directives, the mitzvahs, that are the 248 limbs of the king. That is, they are mechanisms for the delivery of the divine light, keili for the earth. Turns out, that this is accomplished through the birurim of the 288, that is the abundance of kalim of lights, that this is characterized in the quality of tikkun. And this is through mamali, through making the kalim that, through which we draw down the light that matches them. As is explained in other areas, that there's two levels in every mitzvah. A mitzvah is one of the 248 limbs of the king that draw down life force into the soul. And the second is that they are kalim for the light that is within them, that it should burn and not overwhelm them. This is explained through there being the limbs that draw down the divine life of godliness, just as the head grows, just uh, like a child is developed, uh, each one, each aspect according to its individual characteristic, uh, 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 that, that uh, the, the capacity for vision is drawn into the eye, etc. So too, each keli, each vessel, each utensil draws down an abundance of light that is commensurate to it, as is explained in the idea that the Jews put nasa before nishma. It's also explained that the mitzvahs, which are kalim, they evoke this divine light that should be spread out into the keli. And the Alter Rebbe quotes some other source material that this can be further pursued with. Another example is in the elevation of the feminine, that is the, our human being, through our love that is expressed by us reaching from below to above, like in the Pasuk via Hafta, that we arouse from above to below a level of love, which is an or of chesed, elyon, that should be drawn down into, again, the abundance of Caleb. And this is what it means when God says, Ahafti eschem, amar Hashem, I love them, says Hashem. And similarly, in other midas, each one draws down through the abundance of all of the Caleb, because we make an, an approach towards Hashem through the mitzvahs when we identify the godliness within the material. This is also the idea of the sphere. So, Eimer, every day we say, this is one day, this is another day, hayoyim yoyim being the idea of, again, drawing down of revelation from above to below. Yoim, of course, being the gematria kel havaya, and so on, as is explained in other places about what it is that we are supposed to be achieving during this Sfirah The point being 
that the Omer is, the Omer offering, which is Omer again is a quantity, was an amount of barley, which is usually associated with animal food, which represents the 288 divine sparks that fell into this world. And then we go and identify them and transform them from darkness to light, which is the characteristic called ban. That is one of the uh, ways in which we can uh, spell out Hashem's name, means that we have found, we have identified the godliness there as we know. We then transform the darkness into light, and then we transform the keli in for the R, and it becomes a place in which it can rest. This is the transformation that, achieve, that is, uh, occurs during the days of Svira to transform the negative characteristic of the Midas to the other extreme. And this is called the elevation of the feminine, the man, my nukfin, the berurim of the 288 levels of light, that it should be a tikkun by organizing it appropriately in the commensurate kale. And after we complete all of this, and it uses an odd phrase, which it says in the notes that it doesn't seem to match, it says, call a kalim la'oirei, the kale to its light. Then we can reveal the level of Kesar. And again, the Alter Rebbe identifies other areas where this can be quoted. That is, the Anshavuos, that then we have the time of the giving of the Torah, which is the quality of Kesar, the very essence and identity of Hashem. Like we know that the 620 mitzvahs, 613 of Torah and seven of the Rabbanon, represent the 620 pillars of light of Kesar. And this level of elevating the feminine characteristic, the recipient, to a level of Toyu, that Toyu is that level of Sevev Kolam, which we spoke about, which is also associated with Kesar, because in the Pardes, in the uh, chapter about Toyu, what it says that Bina is called Tik Toyu, as is explained in the Sefer by here, that is something that sort of startles a person. That's a similar word to the word for Toyu. It's something amorphous that doesn't have a definitive shape, and it's prior yet to something being organized. This is what Bina is, that it precedes the uh, clarity of an idea, and that's what's explained in the Eitz Chaim. It's also quoted in the Ramban when it says that the earth was Toyu, the second Pasuk of Taira, that explains this idea that it is something yet to be shaped, because the Ein Soif is called Ephes uh, in the sense that it cannot be grasped. It's not Tefisa, and there's a similarity in the wording there. And then you have Toyu. And that's the level of Kes, which again, the crown, that which sits on top of the head, which dictates the essence and the character. Now, Kesser is comparable to the material prior to it being shaped. It's still yet a potential that it is rooted in all four of the primary Yisoyedis, Eishmaim Ruachafars, in capacity, but not yet acted upon. And that's why it's called Toyu, because it is still sort of hazy in the thoughts of man. And this is similar to the idea that Hashem tells Moshe to be quiet. That is, it can't, that something can't be comprehended. And the Alter Rebbe brings other source material where we can look this up. What we do ultimately deduce from this is that there is a Toyu of Kedusha, which is an incomprehensible non-existence. And this is the level of Kesser, because the Chachma comes from nothingness, a Yesh Mi'ayin, based on the Eitz Chayin, that this is that quality called Efes Betoyu, two levels of Kesser, the lower level of the expression, which is called Atik, that is called, again, Efes, not tangible, and the level of Arach Anpin, which is the source, which is called Toyu, ungraspable, and so on, as is explained in other uh, matters. And that is Ganeidin is an FS, a non-graspable uh, to the times of Mashiach, then a Mashiach that would be a expression of this FS, this non-graspable that is even higher than the ayin than the non-existence. And this is why we say ka'ayin or ka'fs, and as explained in other places, the Alta Rebbe brings numerous source material to support this idea. Again, that Bina is called Toyu. That is, because Bina is the level of Kesser, that is, the crown, and again, the idea being that which is even higher than intellect for Zah, is also called the Atika. And again, he, source, he cites further source material. That is, for example, we eat matzah in the first week of the days of Sphere, which is still Pesach. There has to be first this elevation from the human behavior to the level of tikkun. That's why it's an organized, very precise mitzvah, eating matzah. And the idea is that matzah that has no flavor, it doesn't yet have any stature, no hisnasis. It is the level of moichin of Abba. It is yet to be expressed into something very particular. As is explained in our sages say that a child doesn't know how to call out Abba until he tastes grain. What does this mean? Yet he can say the words, but he doesn't understand what they mean. 
However, in order to properly call out to understand what it means to have a quality of Moich and of Abba identified within him, this is only possible after he tastes the taste of grain because chita, wheat, is the quality of chachma. And again, this is the suggestion in the Gemara that the tree of knowledge was actually wheat. And it is the investiture of the moichen of Abba within the person. It is still yet in a minor spot. It's a level of katnas. And this is still called matzah, which is called the poor man's bread, lechamayni. And it has a level of moichen, but it is uh, invested still in only a very minor sense. And that's why it's called the poor man's bread. Look also what is said in the Siddur, based on the Pasuk, Gadol Venecha Mahu. It's also explained in the Pasuk, Sheshis Yomi, Teicho Matzais. Because in Mitzrayim, the Jewish people were totally at katnas. They were very diminished in their godliness. And that's why it says, I will pass over them. Because they were in this iron cauldron in the 49 levels of Tuma of Mitzrayim, in the, the most... Uh, diminished of forms of godliness until Hashem revealed himself through this great passing over, this skipping, and that's why it's called Pesach, because of the skipping over uh, that God passed over their doorways of their homes. That is, that he brought this level of moichin in a uh, non-orderly way, in a way of skipping, like it says in the Yetz Chaim, which is the investiture of moichin of Ab into the katnas, which is the idea of matzah. And that's why there's no sensible taste, there's no perceivable taste, there's no hisnasis because it is still the level of only resisting, the level of bittal, of putting aside my ratzay, which is still a very minor and undeveloped level. And through this, it invests into a level of seviv kolamin, which this is via this diluk, this great leaping, as we mentioned before. And this is that we elevate halasman to the level of toyu, which is a level of seviv. That is, we as human beings can really reach outside of the human or even logical experience. And this is through iskafia, resistance, specifically through bittal. Because it's impossible to draw down the level of seviv unless we have a total bittal. Not even the level of ishapcha or flavor, something that we can comprehend. It is specifically through bittal that we can come to this level of ayin mamish. And through this, we can motivate that the level of true ayin, which is the level of seviv that is hidden, which is not the case with the transformation, which is a level of yesh, like there is the impact that a person senses great love and so on, and all the levels that are achieved through the berurim and the elevation of the 288 sparks. They are not uh, stimulated to this level of toyu, which is the level of ayin, without their first being the revelation of yesh. They are rather awoken to be expressed to the level of tikkun that they come and they radiate in the keli. And this is that level of mamalik. And again, the Alter Rebbe here cites a series of other source material to emphasize this point, that this level of av is a level of still I love, yesh misha ayav, and it draws down this level of bina. But yira, which is the quality of bittal, even if it's an introductory level of yira tata, it is still a chachma tata, still it is rooted in chachmi la, which is this level of I, and it's even more profound than Bina, which is still called Chachm and Bina, Ayin and Yesh. Uh, as is mentioned there, and it's explained that the matzah is, again, the poor man's bread. It is resistance, Eskafia, which reaches to a more profound level even than Eshapcha. As is explained that with my, that, that they have placed an impressive seal, like the, uh, an imprint made in wax, that this is the idea that it is embedded, it is sunken in, to a level of Yira, which draws down this level that's commensurate above, lower to the highest, which is drawing down from the Seva of Kolaman, which is not capable to be reached by Ava. And this is what we explain, that is specifically through Matzah, which is the idea of, again, this impressed, uh, sunken imprint that goes down. Through this, we draw down from the highest level, the revelation, like an, an embossed seal that transforms the letters that we do not see. And this is the idea of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, as is explained in Tanya in chapter 15, about the statement of uh, in the Gemara on the Pasuk that talks about the difference between the servant of God and the one, who, the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him, which is the idea of resistance going beyond your routine. And therefore, the Oyved Elohim is alluded to by the person who studies more than the standard 100 times. Rather, he studies 101 times. And 101 is the gematria of Mi'ayin. Like we say, Chachma Mi'ayin Timsa, as explained in the Zayar. 
<clears throat> and so uh, there is the, 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 these different levels of ayin that draw down this ayin from whence chachma is originated, that is called the etzachayin. And this is reachable exclusively through waskafia. That is, but a person resists the temptation to do the standard and goes beyond it. And this is what is rooted in the idea of escafia and the eating of matzah, the level of bittel, that must be before the transformation that we experience during Svira. Because this that we are making our move towards Hashem, halosman, to the level of toyu, must necessitate that there be a halosman to the level of tikkun, as is explained above, in the mashal of a seed that it will not be able to absorb the power of growth that is contained within the soil until it absorbs itself within the soil and it becomes ayin. And this is the idea that the source of the power of the uh, growth that is embedded within the earth, the minerals of the earth, from whence they are directed to produce grasses, that this is the power of godliness, Mamish, the level of Malchus, of Malchus of Asiya, through which <clears throat> it derives all of the sus sustenance of the earth and all that is in it. Like we know that in the sphere of that is the least evidently godly sphere, the Malchus of the Malchus of Asiya, that's where truly Atmus rests, just like in the soil, which is apparently the least evident, but it contains the power to give uh, life to vegetation, which in turn supports the animal, and so in turn supports the human. In there, embedded in that least evidently godly is the most profoundly level, most profound level of godliness. Even though it is only in the chitzonius, you can't truly see it. But that is where it becomes the source for the next level. That is, the ten kalim become the neshama for bria, and from there to becomes the neshama to the ten sfiras of yitzira, and from the ten kalim it becomes the neshama nasiya. As the, the Alter Rebbe references, and Shirashirim, the idea of skipping over mountains uh, and, and so forth, where it explains the difference between the recitation of Shema and Davening, like our sages say, that Malchus is acquired through 30 characteristics, that is, the 30 Kalim of Atzilas that become the Neshama for Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. And these Kalim of Atzilas, we say, that they and what they give life to and also what they cause, they are and their kalim are all one. Turns out that this level of Malchus of Malchus of Asiya, that in which it rests the infinite light of Hashem, that radiates also first and foremost in Atsilas. And as explained in Igeris HaKodesh and Simon 25, at the end of the uh, this, the mimer, the statement, the teaching, love and bina, and since this is the case in the power of uh, the um, of the vegetation that is invested within the physical world, that has the power of godliness to cause and to, the flourishing without limitation, this is the power that comes from the power of Ein Soif, which is an eternal power that never becomes interrupted, has no limitation, and thus the capacity for reproduction is always embedded in the infinite light of Hashem, like it's explained in, in, in other source material. For this reason, it's impossible that the power of growth, which is a divine power that is to blossom the, the vegetation, uh, unless the seed first submits itself and subsumes itself within the soil. Uh, that this level allows there to be first an ayin, the seed subsumes itself within the earth, and then this becomes a yesh, which is a limited power, and it's impossible for one to happen without, with it, uh, the, that is the seed to become uh, into a blossom, into a fruit or a vegetable without it first surrendering its core identity. It has to first strip that level down and return to a level of ayin, and then it can sustain and retain it the, and absorb the infinite power of growth. Similarly, we find, uh, as we understand above, that there has to be this elevation from our side to a level of toyu first. And without this, it's not possible for there to be a drawing down of godly light into the caleb through the transformation that occurs during Svita. Because this characteristic of a of transformation, that we transform the love for material things to be a love for godliness, this stimulus that comes from us is drawn down or evokes from above, or chesed elyon, this loftiest level of God's kindness into a keli. Like it says, I love them, as we mentioned before. And in order for this revelation of the Orin Soif to come into a keli, into a level that is mugbo, it's impossible that it should happen unless it is first a level that is infinite without any limitations. And then it's because something that's without limitation can't be embedded in something that is limitation. Again, like the seed, 
until the seed subsumes itself in the soil, it will not absorb the characteristic of the soil, which is, although on the surface, just dirt, but it contains the infinite power of godliness to produce uh, growth and reproduction. And in order for the seed to access that, it has to first be mavatal itself and subsume itself. Similarly above, it's impossible for the infinite light of Hashem to manifest itself into Kalim only through transformation, ishapcha, because transformation still suggests the continuous presence of the item. And there first has to be a total level of bitl, has to be ayin. And through this, this is achieved through askafia, which is evident in the eating of matzah, the level of bitl has no, t- has no taste. And this is what we call elevating the feminine quality to the level of toy. We reach that level through total bitl which is through Iskafia more than through Ishafka. And that's what allows for there to then subsequently be Tikkun, which is the, again, the presence of divinity, godliness, iris in defined sections into Kalim through the transformation that is achieved during Svita Sa'ima. This is basically the idea of these two aspects of our approach to Hashem. One is to the level of Mamale Kolam, which is the level of Tikkun, and the second is to the level of Seviv Kolam, which is the level of Tayu, to that which shakes the person up. It is an elevation of our, our spiritual self to the level of Tikkun through the 248 limbs, which are the 248 commandments. Uh, through each, just as each limb draws out the, the uh, soul power that is commensurate to its identity, so too each nefesh draws out its level of godliness. This is the mamali kolalmin, the, the divine light that matches to its keli. And this is the idea of Svira Soime seven weeks to repair the seven characteristics to make them eligible to have godliness dwell within them with a a brilliance and a clarity to elevate the level of our humanity to reach even Seviv Kolam, and which is achieved prior to it with the eating of matzah, the poor man's bread, the level of iskafia resistance, which is total bitalayesh. And through this, we draw down a Seviv Kolam. That's the idea of Pesach, that God skips. He goes completely outside of any order. And again, that was the mushal we had with the imprint that the lower it goes evokes something that comes from the highest level, as is explained in other places. Because the Skafi and Bittal Ayesh, to become total Ayin, is what draws down Seviv Kolam. And, and that's why it says that Chachma comes from Ayin. And this is the mushal that you cannot have the power of growth that's embedded in the soil. Uh, uh, transform the seed until the seed surrenders itself into total ayin. We could say that these two levels of how we approach Hashem, halos man, is the idea of kabbal som shemayin that we say in parsha, uh, the first parsha of the Shema, which is we elevate ourselves to a total seviv kol am and a total surrender of self. Uh, and then the kabbal som mitzvah is the more specific that is enunciated in the second paragraph, ayim shemaya. This is when we reach to the level of tikkun, of amalek kol am. This is what is explained in the Siddur, the, the difference between Krishma and Davening, like our sages say in the Mishnah, why does the Parsha of Shema come before the Parsha of Ahim Shemai? And they explain, because first we have to accept God's authority, and then we can accept God's instruction. And this is the Ikara of Ahaya, that it should be an exception, uh, an acceptance of God's mitzvahs. As we know that the mitzvahs are the 248 limbs of the king, that is the kalim of all different kalim that evoke the quality of godliness that should match them. This is the first parsha of Kriyashma, where we accept upon ourselves the general yoke of Hashem. And the parish of Malchus Shemayim is the Malchus of Ein Seif, from whence we draw down via the connective Kav and Chut. And this is the idea that we dive in directly to Hashem and not to his characteristics. We go right to the boss, so to speak. And this is the idea that Halasman, our actions can reach the level of Toyu, that which is shakes us up. And through this bittel, we unify ourselves with the Pasuk of Shema and the secondary level of bittel through obedience in the Baruch Shem Kavod, which is that we raise ourselves up, Halasman, to the level of Ayin through Iskafia.